Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is the 1DX Mark III versus the Sony A9 II doing a real-world autofocus review. Now, I took the Canon Mark III out to do the full review. Now, that's gonna come out at a later date, but we simply wanted to put out this autofocus comparison between both of these cameras. Now, to paint you a picture of how we did this, now, I say we because Steven sat right next to me with the Sony A9 as I sat there with the EOS 1DX Mark III. We wanted to try and get the same exact framing, the same exact settings, the same exact focus, Focal length, trying to do the same exact thing to get autofocus. Now, what I had to do with the Canon to match the Sony is put it into mirrorless mode by flipping up the mirror. But I want to show you how we had to hold the cameras. In order to record the EVF so you see the focusing points moving, we needed to put an Atomos on top, put the HDMI cable running out of the camera into the Atomos, and hold it out like this so that the screen acted as our viewfinder. This is not how you want to shoot a camera. This is not how you want to hold a camera because it gets very unstable. So just keep in mind, that's how we were doing this. We both handheld it, we both tried to do the same exact thing so that we could make this as real as possible. And just so you know, this weighs 8.07 pounds together, right here. So try hand holding that for a while out in front of you. It just doesn't work too well. So what I'm gonna do right now is jump into the computer to show you the side-by-side -side comparison. Steven, which one's the Canon and which one's the Sony? Look at the oh, right. Oh, it says Canon and Sony. So let's walk you around the screen before we even start right here. Canon's on the left, Sony is on the right. When you see the box being white, that means my finger was not pressed halfway down and activating the autofocus. On the right-hand side, anytime you see the green box or this green dot in the right-hand corner, that means Steven's finger was pressed halfway down on the shutter button, getting the autofocus activated. We can see we're both at 1 1600th of a second at f2.8 at 5000 ISO, shooting at 20 frames per second on both. So 20 frames per second mechanical on the Canon side and 20 frames per second silent on the Sony side. So we have roughly two and a half minutes, a little over two and a half minutes of clips here of real world shooting experience. Let's start rolling with this one. All right, we are active. She's coming up the floor. It's actually pretty amazing that we could both stay on the same thing at the same time, hand holding it like this. As you see that box on the right hand side moving, you see this gray area, this gray line, that means that a photo is being taken. You won't notice that on the Canon side, even though you're shooting 20 frames per second, it's basically blackout free because it, you, you, even, you can't tell that it's actually shooting. But it is because you'll, you'll feel it because it's mechanical and you'll hear it, but also you'll see the numbers right here start to count down. So this first clip is really just to show you to get familiar with what's going on on the screen. Locks on, they both lock on, starts tracking her up the court as Steven's shooting. I'm taking a couple of photos because you can see that blink. And then that is it for this clip right here. Now let's roll the second clip. This is a shorter one, but she's tracking. We're tracking her as she's coming towards me. That's really good. Let's go back. They both are doing a fantastic job here. You can see that the, the Sony will incorporate IAF more than what the Canon is gonna do, but most of the time you can just find the face and they both seem to track fairly well. Let's let the next clip play out just a little bit. We had a little bit of a distraction on my side, but watch as she passes the ball. It's cool just to watch this happen, that we both have basically the same thing. And we're both shooting. But what's happening now? Oh, well, the buffer is done. We froze the one on the left for the Canon because it's not writing to the card anymore. It's instant with CF Express card slots. We're going 20 plus seconds to the bu from the buffer to the cards on the Sony side. The look at this, it's still playing out. Nine, zip, zero, now it finally finished 20 seconds later. The thing about the CF Express cards in the Canon is that they are so fast. You are not waiting ever for the pictures to write to the buffer. You could take a thousand photos in a row and still not have an issue. Whereas with the Sony, you're looking at about 200 RAW files. Not saying that you're gonna shoot 8 million RAW files in a row. It's just showing you that even if you took 20 photos, like 
you know, like across three seconds, it's going to take time to write it in a buffer. You don't want to turn the camera off. You probably can't go into the menu system. So that's one of the things that the Canon is doing better as of now. The buffer just clears so much faster. Here we go. Let's roll again. See what next clip. Ah, she's going backwards. You can see that both of them lose it on occasion, but it's pretty sticky. There on the Canon side, it jumped to the referee in the background and then back to her. Um, and even if the, the box on the right hand side found her thigh, that's still not going to be a problem at this distance. Uh, but I do want to say that I had the Canon set to case number two with all of the sensitivities basically maxed out so that it would stay sticky on the subject as much as possible. It still bounced around, but it's keeping up with the Sony and the Sony is keeping up with the Canon. You just have to keep in mind that one of them is a DSLR masquerading as a mirrorless camera and the other is a full mirrorless camera. So let's come back into the computer, see what we have next. So this is cool. Uh, let's see, tracking her down the floor. We're both shooting, just snapping them off. There we had somebody cross. So the, the, the Canon still locked onto her face. The Sony lost it for a second, but then bounces right back to her face. So they're pretty even right here. And even as she, oh boy, I love watching that happen. I love watching that happen as the ball comes back to us. Uh, and there you go. They both stayed pretty similar on the subject. Next clip, this one's a lot of distraction, so let's play this one out. She's moving, we're trying to handhold the best that we can. Lots of interference here. The Sony seemed to stay on there a little better than the Canon, so let's show you that again. The Sony's locked on, even with the distractions. The Canon jumped over to the left, still had to refind it. Yeah, and then I just took my finger off the button. Continuing on. Coming up the floor with no distractions, they're both working extremely well. Like perfect on both sides of the court. I mean, obviously it should be pretty simple when there's no distractions, except right there. I just lost it on the Canon side, but that's because a player went in front of me and then we reacquired. It didn't happen on the Sony side. She's just there. Watch what happens next. We both lose her. And then, wow, yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to track this. Let's, let's just go back as she, drives the basket right here. Because um, the Canon seems to acquire it pretty quick. It doesn't lock back onto the face, but right here, you can see the box is hunting, hunting. It found her, and then it found the other girl going up for the basket. And then on the Sony side, one more time. Let's look at what the Sony's doing here. It lost it, it lost it. Uh, the focus point was all the way to the left, and then it actually came back to the right. I so happened to pull back from 200 millimeters to like, 70 and Steven stayed at 200. We were trying to keep it the same and just trying to see what we could do. Um, but they both do a pretty good job. Just understand with so many distractions in a frame, you may lose it. Now that brings up a really good point is that Canon now has this touch sensitive button, which is fantastic for moving focusing points when you lose it to quickly get it back to where you need it to be. On the Sony side, you just have a joystick, which is much slower to get the focusing point back to where you need it to be. And also when you're hand holding it out like this, it's even more awkward to try and do it. I hope that Sony will go with a bigger card, a CF Express card in the future, as well as add one of these touch sensitive buttons. They do have the ability to touch and drag on the screen. I personally turn that off because my nose more times than not interferes with it and I find it moving it and then I'm like, why is my autofocusing point not in the right place? Because my nose is hitting it. So I have to turn it off and rely on the joystick. Let me jump in here real quick and remind you that I am doing a super huge mega camera giveaway where one of you will win a free camera valued up to $3,499 or your option to get lenses valued up to the same Price. Now it's absolutely free to enter over at bit.ly slash megafro2020. But if you purchase Fro Pack 1, Fro Pack 2, or the Fro Pack bundle, or have already purchased any of our preset packs, you will score extra entries towards winning the contest. Now keep in mind, there is no purchase necessary. You do not need to buy the presets in order to win the major prize. So head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2020 to get entered right now. A couple more clips here. Now we have a cheerleader. This is perfect to, to watch, watch what happens with the pom-poms. They both do a pretty good job on the face. Then they get distracted by the pom-poms but they both still do a pretty good job. All while taking a couple of pictures. That one lost it on the Sony side, but so did the Canon at the same exact time. But then they both reacquire the face. This is pretty good on both fronts. And the final clip, 
There is a lot of motion here. She is jumping around, lots of dancing, as you can just see exactly what's happening. What's interesting is that the Sony will acquire the IAF more than the, um, the Canon. Okay, so what happened there is Steven moved and then he had to reacquire, I, I lost the, the subject as well. And so here he has to move the focusing point, that's why it's red. And when he reactivates it by pushing the shutter halfway down, it's gonna turn green, but it locks right back on. This is just something that happens if you lose it with any camera, with the Canon, with the Nikon, with the Sonys, you have to go ahead and move the focusing point to where you want it to be close to telling the autofocus to look for. I call it juicing the system. I want it to be up top or to the right where the subject is going to be so that the autofocus knows, ah, I want to be right here with the lock on tracking. Not a lot of distraction. Oh, look at that. There was a distraction going in front of both of us and it didn't interfere with the frame at all. So locked on, still locked on, still taking a couple of pictures here and there. And honestly, honestly, they both did a pretty good job. It's really interesting to see what Canon is able to do with a DSLR with the mirror locked up in what we'll call mirrorless camera mode versus what the Sony has done. Now keep in mind that the A9 to the A92 is a pretty small incremental update, but they have updated the firmware quite a bit to help with the lock-on tracking uh, and the IAF. Now one thing to keep in mind about the Canon is that this is a DSLR that when you flip up the mirror, it becomes a mirrorless camera. And the boxes are so much less laggy than in the EOS R, but that's because of the processing power that the 1DX Mark III gives you. To wrap it all up, I still think the Sony was slightly better, but yeah, the Sony is a little easier to hold when you take all of the junk off the camera and you're not recording and you're just shooting regularly versus using the EOS R with the Hoodman loop attached to the back because the Sony is just designed as a mirrorless camera. But if, if Canon, can put out a pro mirrorless camera with the same technology that you find other than, other than being a DSLR, it's going to give Sony a run for their money because here they both did a really good job tracking the subject. I still think the Sony is better when it comes to lock on and tracking and finding the eye at a distance. It just feels like it is better. Now the Canon isn't far behind, which is a good thing for Canon being that they've been so far behind in this technology over the last couple of years. But what do you think? Which ones do you, which camera do you think did a better job based off of what you see right here on the screen? When we get to the full review, I will put out raw files. I will put up side by sides, but to tell you that they both, if, if you see it in focus on the screen with the boxes and I'm taking pictures, then the pictures were gonna be in focus. So basically what you see is is what you're gonna get in the final image. And that's where I'm gonna leave it this time. We will have a full review in the future. Let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.